Hello everybody, this is Jeff from Simply Bagels VA. I'm here with the folks from Blue Ridge Vantage. They're videotaping us today and I'm going to be showing you how to make bagels at home. This is a simple recipe that anybody who has an oven and some ingredients can mix up and make some delicious bagels. A little bit of information for you. I started baking bagels about 30 years ago while I was in the Navy. I realized I couldn't get a good bagel on the ship. So I asked the chaplain if I could use the galley. They gave me some flour, some salt, some sugar, some water, and some yeast. I mixed it all up and I made about 200 bagels that night. The recipe's come a long way since then for me to produce a bagel that I think everybody would enjoy. So now that we've had an introduction, let me tell you some of the ingredients that you'll be using today. Okay, some of the tools you're gonna need in order to make the bagels right off the top is I recommend you get a a kitchen scale to weigh your ingredients, a bread cutter, you'll definitely need some measuring cups and measuring spoons, and let's introduce you to your set of ingredients. First of all, you're going to need a good bread flour, approximately four cups or 480 grams of bread flour. The higher the protein level, the better. King Arthur makes a 12.7% gluten forming protein uh, bread flour. The second thing you're gonna need is barley malt or molasses. The barley malt and molasses is the secret ingredient that makes a New York style bagel. I know you hear it's the water all the time, but it's actually the barley or molasses. The difference between the two is a molasses is gonna produce a sweeter bagel. You're going to need two teaspoons of regular table salt, one teaspoon of sugar, one packet or 0.25 ounces of active dry yeast, not rapid yeast, and one and a half cups of water. There is an asterisk. If you use 480 grams of bread flour, if you measure the flour, you're going to want to reduce the water to one and a quarter cups. Again, if you measure out your flour, you're going to want to reduce the amount of water. And right here at the top, what I'm gonna do is, my water is warm, it's about 105 degrees, and we're going to add that one teaspoon of sugar, and you're going to add your yeast, and you're gonna mix that up. I'm using my dough scraper, and that's gonna sit for a few minutes. It's gonna sit for a few minutes. And the yeast is gonna start eating up that sugar and producing a nice mixture. So we'll let that sit for a few minutes. Some of the other things you're going to need for the bagels include a pot with halfway full with water. In the future we're going to create some boiling water. Something to scoop out your bagels. I highly recommend a cooling rack for when your bagels are done baking. Also this is used to put toppings on your bagel. I have a whole host of toppings. Garlic, onion, sesame, poppy seeds, and a nice hard coarse crystal sea salt. You're going to need a pan with parchment paper. The other secret to New York style bagels, bagel boards. These bagel boards are used to prevent the bagels from sitting right on top of a breadstone or a pie stone. I will be showing you how to make bagels two different ways today. One way I'll be using the bagel boards, the other way I'll just do it directly on the pan. So, now that we've got all of the ingredients out of the way and all the tools, let's go ahead and mix the dough. If your oven does not have a proof setting, what I'd like you to do is get one cup of water in a microwave safe dish, put it inside your microwave, and leave it there just for a minute as we mix our dough. Let's mix the dough now. So we've got our yeast mixture and sugar. I have placed the two tablespoons of barley malt inside of my flour and what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up that barley malt inside the flour. What tends to happen is the barley malt will stick to the sides of your bowl so you want to give it a good mix and cut across it. Cut across it. You can see the barley malt is sometimes sticking inside or sticks with the flour. That'll break up as we add the yeast mixture. Let's add our salt. We'll mix that up. Excellent. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add the yeast mixture. And what I want you to do 
is I'd like you to fold that in. Let's turn your bowl. Pour it in. Turn your bowl. Pour it in. Turn your bowl. So it gets nice and mixed. And then you can pour the rest in. There you go. Now it's going to be very sticky to start. That's completely normal. Again, I'm using a dough scraper to help mix it and keep my hands clean. But if you are using your hands at the top here, I'd recommend keeping a little bit of cold water or water to the side. You don't necessarily want to add additional flour. And you're going to get that nice and mixed up here in the bowl at a point where you're starting to form a ball. And when you reach that point, you're going to place the dough on your countertop. Now you can see there's no additional flour on my countertop. No additional flour on my countertop. There's an excellent YouTube channel called Bake with Jack. Bake with Jack. He is a baker in England, Great Britain, and he does some excellent videos about how to knead breads and make delicious breads. And this is the tip he gives for kneading bread. So we're going to do this first part for six minutes. So what I'm going to do is, um, on back along the side, I'm going to use my microwave timer and I'm going to put it on six minutes. And here we go. What you're going to do is you're going to stretch the dough out and bring it back in. Give it a good, give it a good pat down, stretch the bread out, bring it back in and collect all that extra flour that's on the side. Again, to start, you don't want to put any extra flour on your workspace. Out, stretch the bread out, and bring it back in. Now, off to the side, after I've done this for a few minutes, I do have a little bit of extra flour. And I'll show you why in a minute. Because what's going to happen is, it, the inside of your dough will be a little sticky. It will be a little sticky. This, this bread is not considered very moist. It's about 60% hydration, which means 60% water to flour ratio. But it does get a little sticky. But unlike a sourdough bread, we're only going to knead this bread one time. One time. So when you get about halfway through and you feel like it's sticking, it's okay to add just a little bit of flour on the bottom. Spread it out just a little. Put a little bit of flour on the top and continue kneading. But what you don't want to do is don't over flour. Don't, no reason to over flour it. If your dough is very wet and you might have used just a little bit more water than you expected, this is where you can add that additional flour. As we do this, another thing you could do is if you have a KitchenAid mixer or if you have a, a mixer that can do any type of mixer that can do dough, you can obviously skip the hand mixing use your KitchenAid and what you'll do is to start you'll do it for one minute on a low speed one minute on low and then six minutes on a medium speed all the time watching the dough and you want it to to form up in a nice ball that does not stick to the sides of the bowl so here as you can see as I'm kneading it I'm starting to form a really nice dough some of the times, even now, depending on the temperature of your kitchen or the humidity in your kitchen, that barley malt may not always be cooperative. So I can see my dough and there is some spots where the barley malt is still needs to be better mixed in. But as we continue to knead that barley malt and as the dough warms up, that barley malt will slowly melt into the dough. I'm feeling it's just a little sticky right now, just a little too much for me. I'm going to add just a, just a little bit of flour, just a little. I'm going to get it in there, fold it over, and continue kneading my dough. So we're going to take a break right now, and through the magic of editing, we'll come back with the finished dough, and we'll show you what to do next. So, 
Okay, by the magic of video editing, we're about to grease the bowl. I'm using a cooking spray. You're going to put your dough into your bowl. You're going to go ahead and get some of that cooking spray on the dough. And next thing you're going to do is you're going to take a clean cloth, cover your dough. And again, if you have a, an oven with a proof setting, I'd recommend you dampen the cloth. But in this case, we're going to throw it in the microwave with that hot water, that steam. Place it in your microwave and set the timer for 30 minutes. It's going to take a minimum of 30 minutes to proof. It will not completely double in size, but what you will find is it'll start getting some air bubbles. And by magic, we actually have one. And as you can see, as I mentioned earlier, there may be some places where you see the barley malt. That's fine. As we roll out the bagels, it will not impact we place the dough on our countertop. We, we do not want to get rid of our, our rag because our cloth because we're going to keep it covered. But at this point, you can put a little bit of flour on the top and put a little bit of flour on the bottom. And what I'd like you to do is also put a little bit of extra flour off here to the side. Because as you form the bagels, you want them to be on a surface that doesn't stick. So I'm going to use again my, my bread scraper, my dough scraper. And I'm going to give it just a little toss to get some of the air out, not all of it. And as I mentioned before, the dough is not supposed to completely double in size. size. And what we're going to do is we're going to make eight bagels. Eight bagels. Really simple. We're going to cut the dough in half. Approximately half again. And then just keep doing that half again and then half again so I'm not worried about them not coming apart yet or being perfect because you will see that you can always add a little or remove a little as you feel is necessary so we have created eight bagels they're ready to go and I'm gonna show you how to form your bagels two different ways the first way that I actually don't recommend would be to create a ball and then do it the donut style. Just poke a hole in the middle, stretch it out, and you've got your bagel. But that's not how they do it in New York. So in New York, what you do is you roll it out to about 8 to 10 inches long. You're going to wrap it around your hands. So watch. Wrap it around your hands. Crimp the bagel. Give it a good crimp. Give it a good roll and watch. Bagel. Let me show you again. And again, if you, it doesn't have to be the same size bagels. If you'd like to measure them out and have them all the same size, that's fine. But I'll show you again. Take the bagel, roll your hand, take the corners. You can put a little bit of water if it's too dry, but our dough is really good. Roll it out. And I'll show you a third one before we before we get to it. Oh, stuck a little bit. This one's a little smaller. No problem. No problem. They'll all taste delicious. So we're going to roll it out. Place my, my palm down. Roll it over. Take the size. Pinch it up. Give it a good roll. And just almost like that. There you go. So let me roll the rest of these out for you. Alright, we have rolled out our eight bagels. What I want you to do is cover them, let them sleep, let them sleep for 15 minutes. After you've covered them, come over to your stove and be sure you have a nice large spaghetti type pot for spaghetti and put it on medium high heat till this water starts to boil. As soon as it starts to boil, lower the heat so it just simmers. As you can see, I also have the rest of the workspace all ready to go. The process will be as follows. You're going to boil the bagels. After you boil the bagels, you're going to see an ice bath. 
the bagels are going to come out of the hot water into an ice bath. After they've been in the ice bath for a few seconds, they're going to be put on the cooling rack for us to decorate, as my kids used to say, decorate the bagels until they're ready to go into the oven. So the process again is from the boiling water, it'll be 30 seconds on each side, into the ice bath, onto the cooling rack, and then ultimately onto your baking pan or to the bagel boards. And we'll show you that after the bagels are done with their second rest for 15 minutes. See you then. It's been 15 minutes. Time to put our bagels into the boiling water. As you can see, we have a pot of boiling water. I've got my dough scraper ready to go if the bagel's stuck to the countertop a little bit. I've got my tool to remove the bagels from the boiling water. From the boiling water, it's gonna go to the ice bath and then onto my cooling rack. So let's, let's make this happen. If you have a large enough pot, you can do four bagels at once, not a problem. And you're gonna do 30 seconds on each side. 30 seconds on each side. Let me grab another one. And what I do is I count in my head. If you have a timer, that's fine. If the bagels have proofed correctly, you'll see they'll float. They will float. If they didn't float, you'll probably have a delicious bagel, but the texture may not be exactly what you were expecting. So that's been about 30 seconds. Let's flip them over and go for another 30 seconds. Let's remove the bagels from the boiling water and then into your ice bath. Into the ice bath. Into the ice bath. Into the ice bath. And one more into the ice bath. Go ahead and get those in there. And let's go back and do the remaining four bagels. Here we go. Same as before. They may stick to your countertop. That's completely normal. That's completely normal. I've got four bagels that are moving here. One, two, three, four. Again, 30 seconds on each side, but this time I'm gonna check these bagels over here. And once I think they've been cooled off, we're gonna put them on the cooling rack. Cooling rack. Perfect. Perfect, okay. This is, it's been about 30 seconds. Let's flip these over again. Flip it over again. Clean up my work surface just a little bit because I have another batch coming out in just, just a few minutes. Good, good, good. Again, you can see the bagels are floating, which is great. It's been about 30 seconds. Let's drop them in the ice bath. Perfect. So as this is sitting for a couple seconds, it's at this point you can make a decision to add an egg white to your recipe. A lot of people will take an egg white add a small amount of water, mix it up, use a pastry brush and coat the eggs with some egg white. It'll help with the texture and color of the bagel. But what I've done is I have a little secret hiding here, is I'm using a product called Dystatic Malt Powder. And the malt powder is another secret that New York bagel makers use to give the bagel that crispiness and that brown color, that really nice pretty color. You add approximately one half teaspoon for every cup of flour. Again, one half teaspoon for every cup of flour. I added this at the beginning and I don't specifically need to use the egg white, but it, if it's something you'd like to do, you can lightly coat your bagels with some egg white. It'll also help your topping stick to the bagels. So here we go, look at these beautiful bagels. These are all handmade. You're gonna have something similar. And there we go, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So, here we go. Now for the everything bagels that we make at Simply Bagels, all of them are done the same way. 
and we have a combination of toppings. We have garlic, garlic, and we actually do every one of the bagels one at a time because we find the flavor seems to be more consistent than dunking the bagels. Now you can go to your local supermarket and purchase the everything bagel topping mix. We wouldn't recommend that because what tends to happen when you use the everything bagel mix are the sesame seeds and the poppy seeds wind up going all the way down to the bottom so you don't always get a consistent flavor across the bagel. So again, if you have everything bagel topping, that's fine. But the, my suggestion would be go ahead and get yourself some individual spices. Do it by hand. I'm using a little shaker here. And this is the onion. Now when you have the bagels that we make from every Simply Bagels, uh, you will sometimes get one that has maybe a little more onion or maybe a little bit more garlic. And the reason that happens is the person baking the bagel isn't always awake or they just felt like adding in a little bit of additional onion or garlic. So be aware that every bagel is unique. Every bagel has its own personality. And we'll put some sesame seeds on. And that's what makes these special. And as my daughter told me that if you don't bake the bagels with love, they don't taste as good. So let's put some sesame seeds on here. And when you're doing this at home, feel free to, to mix up the flavors. If you like more sesame seeds or more poppy seeds, go crazy. Poppy seeds. Outstanding. Look at these. These are, these are awesome. By the way, underneath my cooling rack, I put a broiling pan. If um, you don't do that, your significant other, spice, children, boyfriend, girlfriend, roommate, will find sesame seeds and poppy seeds all over your house, in your shoes, in your boots, in your clothing. So, highly recommend having something to capture all those. Look at those, outstanding. Those are ready to go in the oven. As I mentioned earlier, we have two of, I have two ovens. I'm gonna teach you how to make bagels two different ways. The oven was preheated to 450. And I'm, again, I'm gonna show you how to make these bagels two different ways. So the first way, first way will be, we're going to take a couple of the bagels, and we're going to put them topping side down on my baking pan. Topping side down on the baking pan. And we're going to throw those into the oven. And it's going to be in the oven for six minutes. Six minutes. I'm going to set my timer for six minutes. Six minutes. The other ones I'm going to show you is I'm going to use the bagel boards. And the bagel boards, again, prevent the bagels from touching the baking stone or pizza stone. So again, we're going to go upside down, and my toppings are getting all over my kitchen, so I'll get yelled at later. And I have a pizza stone or a bread stone in my oven, and I'm going to drop it into the oven now. So we've completed the first part, and now what we're going to do now is we're going to flip over these bagels. We're going to flip them over, flip them over, flip them over, flip them over. And we're going to push it back in and we're going to set our timer for five minutes. Set our timer for five minutes. Now the same for the bagels that are on the bagel board, but in this case, less chance of burning my fingers. Flip them. Flip them. And we'll see everybody in five minutes. So our five minutes have been completed. Oh, look at that. Yummy, yummy, yummy. We're gonna rotate the pan. In your residential kitchen, you're gonna have different hot spots. So every, every oven is going to be different. So rotate your pan. And believe it or not, we're also gonna rotate this monster. 
and this one's much heavier. We're gonna rotate this as well. Fantastic, close it up, and we're gonna set our timer again for five minutes. It has been five minutes, we are ready. Let's check out the bagels. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, nice, nice color. There we go. Now, when you are finished baking your bagels, do not put them in a plastic bag. Put them in something like a paper bag or a crate. I'm gonna use a box. And you'll drop them in there. And let's, let's check out our bagels that are on the stone. Look at those. Now these need, these are a little bit not done yet. So I'm gonna put them back in for 30 more seconds. And I can tell they're not done is when I touched them, they were still a little bit moist. But our second check of our bagels on the pizza stone. Ah, they feel much better. Those are delicious. And again, I'm gonna use my hands. We're gonna throw them in the box. And the reason we're throwing them in a paper bag or box is we don't want any plastic to melt up against the, these hot bagels. And there they are. Thank you for joining us for this quick tutorial on how to make bagels at home. I'd like to walk you very quickly through the steps we used. First of all, ensure that you have all your necessary tools, your pots, your pans, your baking tools. You'll need a baking tray. Next, your ingredients will be four cups of flour or 480 grams of flour. You'll need two teaspoons of salt, one teaspoon of sugar, a packet or a quarter of an ounce of yeast, and one and a half cups of water, hot water or warm water. And if you are using 480 grams of flour, please reduce that down to one and a quarter. Mix up all your ingredients, knead it nicely, let it rest or let it rise or proof for approximately 30 minutes. If you do not have a proofing oven, what you'll need to do is put it in your microwave for 30 minutes. After that, you'll form your bagels. You'll make your little ropes and wrap it around your hand. Make eight bagels, that's what we recommend. Let them sit for 15 minutes and then the fun begins. You'll place your bagels four at a time, typically inside your boiling water. After 30 seconds, flip your bagels, take them out of the uh, boiling water after 30 seconds again, place them in your ice bath. Let them sit there for just a minute, start your next batch of bagels, place your finished bagels from the ice bath onto your cooling rack, and then you're ready to bake after you've done that a second time. Put your delicious sprinkles on top, your onion, your garlic, your sesame, your poppy seed, your salt. Place in the oven the topping side down on your parchment paper or on your baking stone. Five to six minutes, flip them over. Five to six minutes, rotate the pan. And at the end of the day, you get delicious bagels. Nothing fancy, just delicious. Thanks again from Simply Bagels VA and our friends at Blue Ridge Vantage. Have a nice day.